Dolls. I'm Bethany Davidson, the Humane Educator here at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. And then Animal Wrangling for us, per the usual, is our volunteer coordinator, Sean Snyder. So we're back to showing all of our dogs again, but I have a, a little bit of a different reason this time. Not only do we continue to have a large number of canine residents, but we're also trying to get these guys in some foster homes during the month of December. Um, so um, be mindful, you know, if you're a fan of the show, you know what kinds of dogs we get. You know, we're looking for people who can take, um, you know, terrier, pit bull terrier type dogs, young dogs, um, larger dogs. Um, if you're interested in maybe taking a dog for a week, a weekend, a couple of days, and giving them a little bit of a break from living here in the stressful shelter environment, um, you can do that by emailing us um, and our uh, animal care supervisor, Brandy Odin. So that's going to be emailing her at B O D I N O. D I N at frederickcountymd.gov if you're interested in participating in our uh, Home for the Holidays uh, Canine Foster Program. Um, and one of the dogs that might find his way into a foster home this holiday season is Haggard. Um, he acquired that name because he is a red merle color. Um, so he's a merle Haggard, uh, much uh, like the singer, obviously. And he's a sweet guy. I He is... Every time I walk by his kennel, he's doing this. Um, he leans on people. He leans on the front of the kennel. You know, his jowls kind of slide up because he just wants you to reach in and, and pet him, um, especially if you're close to the kennel. He's like, I got to get as close as I can. Um, so he's a very affectionate guy in addition to being incredibly cute. Um, he loves adults. He does really well with older kids. Um, but we've listed him as Teenager Plus because he was found as a stray and um, the people kept him in their home for a little while and found that he really did not enjoy their younger children. Um, you know, he was very good about using his body language, but he was using cues that were saying, hey, I don't really dig this. Can you please leave me alone? Um, and we want to make sure that he's going to be set up for success in a new home. So we are recommending him to go to a home with adults only or teenagers. Um, if you have kids that are a little bit older, you know, in that tween age, I guess, and they're used to having a dog, would also be fine. But we're trying to stay away from those really young kids. Um, he's playful, energetic. Um, he does know, you know, some basic things. Sit. Um, but he can get a little playfully aroused like most of the dogs his age. He's about two to three years old. So still in, you know, coming, just starting to come out of that adolescent uh, dog age. So Haggard has a behavior that we're trying to modify and we worked on it with one of our other canine residents. What is that behavior? So uh, he's not really exhibiting it right now, but uh, much like Evan, um, Haggard doesn't really like it when people take his toys. He thinks they're super valuable. He likes to keep them for himself, not share them. And that's another reason why we're looking at, you know, families with older kids for him, because that's something that he needs to learn. Um, but a lot of kids don't necessarily know to wait or to trade um, when they're taking toys away. And a lot of kid toys look like dog toys. So we don't want him to be confused on that front. So all of those things are easily modifiable. We've done a really good job with Evan teaching trade or, you know, I come in peace so that they know that when you walk by, it doesn't mean that you're going to take something away. Um, and all of those things we can go over, obviously, in any uh, adoption interview if you were to take um, Haggard and make him part of your family. If that's something you're thinking of wanting to do, um, the first step is going to be to book an appointment to meet with him. And you can do that by going to visit fcac.as.me. Our next guest is Turner, and he's been with us for a little bit. He, um, We have him down as a, a boxer mix, mixed with what? We could never tell you. Um, you know, when we're making our decisions about what breed animals are, we're really just looking at what we can see. Um, and sometimes we're not right. People come back and they're like, well, we got a DNA test, blah, blah, blah. It says this. We can only go by what we're, we're looking at. And sometimes different combinations of dogs make them have traits of another type of breed. Um, so we do our best, but, you know, we're going with Boxer Mix for Turner. He's about a year old, and he's plumped up a bit since he got here. He came in actually quite thin. Um, you could see kind of all of his, his bones and things like that. So we had him on three times a day feeding, and as you can see, um, he's full of energy, perked up, and ready to go. Um, he's a very playful guy. He can be a little bit uh, mouthy with his play, but with his food, he actually takes food super nicely. Um, when I walk by every day and give him food through the, the you know, give everybody a treat, he takes it like in his jowls and just like holds it super gently and then like eventually eats it. So, um, you know, he has uh, that going for him. You know, a lot of dogs take treats very like uh, aggressively. They're so excited to eat it, um, but he doesn't do that. But he can be a little mouthy in his play, which is something that can be worked on. Um, he came right in. He's super confident. He's very friendly, loves the toys, loves affection. Um, 
he's just uh, an all in out great dog. And we've had a lot of people look at him and, you know, some people apply, but for one reason or another, um, it just hasn't worked out. So he's still here waiting for that chance at a forever home. Um, like a lot of dogs here, he does have some allergies. So he gets, you know, his daily Benadryl. Um, hopefully those things would just be seasonal. And sometimes they can be a little environmental here with the stress. And when they go home, they don't always have to, to maintain those types of, of allergy medications. So on his medical, it does indicate that he has happy tail. So for those who may not know what that is, can you explain it for us? Absolutely. You know, happy tail is something that you will probably see on a lot of medicals um, because of the environment in which the dogs live. So, so basically, they're super happy, friendly. They're walking around, and their tail just back and forth, back and forth. But in the kennel environment, it hits the wall um, and those cinder block walls. And what can happen is the end of the tail, like the skin, starts to break um, and then it can bleed and callus is over eventually. Um, so he has a little callus on there. So we try to do things like um, provide you know, medication for that, um, make sure that it's gonna heal nicely, doesn't get infected. But then in the kennels, you know, if you're ever walking through and you're like, why are there blankets hanging all over that kennel? Um, sometimes that's why to kind of soften that to prevent it from getting worse. Um, Cause we found like putting things on their tail to, to protect it doesn't really work because they're dogs and they just pull it off. Um, so that's what it is. It's not a huge deal. A lot of times, again, in a home, that's not a factor, but you'll see it on a lot of the dogs here. I think um, Miles might have also had happy tail at one point. So it's a pretty common thing in shelter environments. If you're interested in making uh, Turner here part of your home, you think he has just the right playfulness to keep your kids busy uh, all winter long, then you can go to visit fcac.as.me to book that appointment to meet him. Our next guest is Maria, and she's one of uh, our, again, many terrier mixes. <laughs> and uh, uh, Maria is wiggly, to say the least. Um, she is uh, very affectionate. She definitely wants to be in your space at all times, um, except for when she's playing. Um, those are kind of her two favorite things, to play and to be cuddled. Um, sometimes she does them both at the same time. I've definitely been sitting in her kennel with her where she's like as close as she possibly can be to me. And like I'm rubbing her and she's also like chewing on her toy and like flailing around. So um, she's a little bit older. You know, we have a lot of dogs in that one to two range. She's three to four, but she definitely competes with them in terms of their youthful exuberance. Um, she does not have an old soul. Um, she does have a little bit of, of hair loss and things like that. Her coat could use some work, but you know, with, you know, good proper care and maintenance, a lot of that stuff goes away. Um, and that's something that we've been working with her on. She came in with a little bit of skin infection, ear infection, a lot of those types of things. So we've been working with her to um, get all of all of that stuff cleared up. Um, but you know, just in, as a general rule with any, with any of your dogs, you wanna make sure you're getting them in there for their yearly checkup to make sure that you're following up with any of those types of things. I really love Maria, she's super sweet, she's very affectionate, and uh, lots of people are starting to kind of see how great Maria is. Yeah, so in her kennel, she's happy, she's wiggly, but she hasn't always been that way, so what transformations has she made since she's been with us? So in the, uh, she came in at the end of October, and at that time, like she was uh, very, very timid, um, very fearful. Um, and we didn't even want to put her out in the general population because we were so afraid that she would be overwhelmed. So we put her in a, a quieter area where she was a little bit off to herself. Um, and, uh, you know, over time she started to really become this, um, in, re in relatively short time, but there are still some things that she's working on. You know, she is very, um, nervous in unfamiliar places. So, um, even at first in, in that quiet area, she didn't want to go in and out of the door. It was really freaking her out. And then to put her on the show today, she had to go through a different door that she was not accustomed to. Um, she had to actually be carried through that door. Um, but then when she got in here, she was totally fine. So it's just, you know, really getting her used to those new things and, and being patient um, with her as she's she's learning that things are safe and, and not something to worry about. And then, you know, the next couple of times she goes through that door probably won't be as big of an issue because she learned that it was okay. Um, but those are all things that her new family is gonna have to, to work with her with, you know, making sure that every experience she has is a positive one. You know, she came through this door and she got lots of affection, she got treats, she got to play. So that's gonna make her more inclined to think that that door is safe in the future. Um, same thing with you know car rides and um, 
any any experience with any dog really um and for that reason because she can be a little bit fearful um definitely looking to make sure that she's not going home with kids that are too young um she's not really very mouthy or anything like that but she can startle easily and we want to make sure that you know younger kids who maybe not don't understand body language or respecting those boundaries don't don't get in her way in a way that would make, make her react in a negative manner Again, just setting up all of our dogs for success. So if you think that you have the right household and the patience to help build Maria's confidence so that she can just be her wiggly self all the time, um, you can start that process by going to visit fcac.as.me to book that appointment to meet her. So we have typically a lot of terrier mixes, pit bull type dogs, um, but we do have a variety of other breeds on the adoption floor right now. We have uh, a bunch of uh, Huskies um, and then Sable, our Malamute. We have the Boxer mixes, obviously, like Turner uh, and Gucci. And then we have a bunch of Shepherd mixes, too. So we have Ada, who's on the show today, um, but we also have uh, Echo who is another one of our shepherd mixes available for adoption as well. Um, Ada is two years old and uh, she is your typical German shepherd. <laughs> um, she is uh, very much into her people. Um, I was, we were talking before we started filming. She loves one of our kennel techs now and that has become her person. And so when she can see this kennel tech walking around, she's very focused on like, where is she? I need to go over here and what's she doing? And she kind of ignores other people to, to be with that person. So she's a very loyal dog. And that's, uh, I'm not the German Shepherd expert, but according to our staff, that's very typical of the breed. So she is, you know, your typical German Shepherd. She's also, uh, as you can hear a little bit, a little bit vocal. She's not afraid to express herself um, when she's feeling things, when she wants things. So if you live in an apartment, that might be something to consider because Ada um, is no problem sharing her opinion. Um, another thing that you can easily see um, on video is her size. <laughs> um, we have a male Mastiff mix that weighs 111 pounds, and this dog weighs more. <laughs> um, she weighs about 118 pounds right now. Um, so obviously, you know, she can pull on the leash. You want to make sure that you can handle her in terms of, you know, walking her and her strength. But also she's going to be a dog that somebody's going to need to work on, like a diet and exercise plan, talking to your vet to get her down to her ideal weight. She's only two years old. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that she has a nice, long, happy, healthy life. So working on that with her is going to be important. Um, you know, she does know sit. Um, she's very affectionate. She wants to be close to you. Um, she was a previously owned dog. So um, the owner also says that she does have a playful and energetic side, that she rides well in the car, all that normal um, dog stuff uh, as well. So she seems like a, a great dog, a wonderful dog. Why was she surrendered to it? So um, the the owner stated that, you know, we talked about how loyal she is. Um, she would be a little protective of the owner um, to the point where the other dogs in the house, she would start to do some like body blocking. A lot of people, when we think about resource guarding, they don't think of humans as a resource animals can guard. They think of, oh, I'm going to guard my toys or my food or my bed. But humans are also a resource. And so she was kind of doing a little bit of that. And uh, because there were other animals and, and things in the home, um, unfortunately, Ada was brought to us. So she may be better suited as an only dog. We don't have any restrictions on um, you know, the age of, of the children, things in the house, but just being mindful that, you know, she can be a little protective of, of whoever she deems her people, whether it's one person in the household or the entire family, if you're having guests and things over. Um, you know, if you have had German Shepherds in the past, then maybe no big deal, you're used to it and it's gonna be a great fit. Um, but just kind of thinking about all of all of those things. But all in all, she's a very sweet dog and people are definitely starting to talk here amongst the staff about how much um, they like her and they enjoy spending time with her. If you want to see if you will also fall in love and enjoy spending time with Ada, the easiest way to do that is to go to our booking website and make that appointment to meet her. And that's going to be visit fcac.as.me. You know, we talk about our, our young adolescent dogs and... Uh, this is the youngest dog that we have on the floor right now. Uh, this is Giblet. He came in and was made available right before Thanksgiving. So that's how he acquired that moniker. Um, he's about six months old. So he's just coming out of puppy and into adolescent. Um, so this is the time when dogs like to te start testing their boundaries, much like, you know, your 13 year olds in your household, yes. right? Um, he is um, a dog that is really looking for somebody to teach him everything. He you know, 
he obviously is not great at catching things, so his his uh, muzzle eye coordination is a little off. But he's a very busy guy. He's very active and energetic, and he needs he doesn't even know sit yet, so he needs somebody to work with him on all of his basic manners, house training, you know, polite leash walking, all of that stuff, um, you know, treating him like he's that eight week old puppy that's coming into your house, but now he's just a little bit bigger. Um, he's very treat motivated, so that's going to be something that helps with that training process. Um, but he's definitely looking for a committed owner. Yes, he's super cute, but he is a you know a responsibility, and we want to make sure that he's going to get all of those things that he needs, and he's not going to end up back here in six months' time bigger um, without having those manners and things like that. Um, but he's really fun, playful, um, obviously incredibly cute, um, and uh, you know he is going to be a great addition. Um, to a household as long as they're willing to kind of put in the work um, and again make sure he's getting all of that training and exercise that he really needs to be a good canine citizen. So originally when he was put on our adoption floor we were recommended him for kids of any age but now we're reconsidering that. Why is that? So um, you know as he's getting comfortable here he's starting to you know show us more about him and while you know super affectionate really into stuff um, he's definitely been becoming a little bit mouthier than um, he had originally, um, particularly when it comes to, you know, not wanting to go back into his kennel after he's, after he's been outside and things like that. And yes, in a home environment, probably not going to, you know, be putting your dog back in the kennel all the time, but you might be putting him in a crate or things like that. Um, and he's been, you know, nipping um, at hands and pulling at clothing and things like that. So, um, you know, younger children, that might not be a great environment just because, you know, kids are much shorter and they're right at, um, you know, the height where they're not going to necessarily get nipped at on their hands or their legs or arms, but more in their face and their neck area. So, um, you know, it's all, all of those decisions that we make are safety precautions um, to set the dog up for success, but also to keep, you know, families and children and households safe. So, you know, if you have a mouthy dog in your house and your kids are used to it, cool. If they're not, then maybe, you know, even though he might be the youngest dog and you're looking for a really young dog, maybe Giblet's not the best fit for your family. So really thinking about those things. Again, great dog, but we are just noticing that mouthy issue. Um, and we're, you know, obviously doing our best to rectify that because he does have to, you know, go in and out of his, his kennel at night. But just, you know, making sure it's going to be the right fit. Um, and not just looking at the aesthetics or the age of the dog, but the personality, temperament, and things that are, you know, suited to your levels of experience, right? Um, but he is a dog with tons of potential in the right households. And if you think that yours is that right household, um, you want to go to visit fcac.as.me to make that appointment to meet him and start the adoption process. Our last guest today is royalty. And, you know, we had a couple of girls on the show today, but really we don't have that many female dogs. Our population, I would probably say, is about 70% males. Um, and so royalty is is a, a rare, rare find right now at the shelter if you're looking for a female dog. Um, she's about two years old. She did come to us uh, previously owned. I think there were some issues um, with adequate space or something like that in terms of their housing. Um, but uh, she is a very friendly dog. She is very wiggly, much like Maria. She's very affectionate um, and she's pretty well mannered. Um, she's not necessarily jumping all over you all the time. She does no sit. Um, you know, according to our assessment, she does pull a little bit on the leash, but for dogs of her breed, they, they basically all pull on their leash a little bit. Um, that's, and that's not a hard thing to really work through and fix. Um, she's just um, she does love treats. Um, I couldn't really get her to play with a ton of things. She just wants to be rolling around at your feet and, you know, kind of in your space bubble a little bit. They were processing her and they were like, she just kept trying to sit on my lap. She wouldn't like go away. Um, so very affectionate, very lovable, very sweet. Um, has not had any issues with the other dogs here in this facility, which is um, something that, you know, a lot of people are, care about because they want to have dogs either that they could take out in public um, to a lot of different places or they have existing dogs in their households. And that doesn't seem to be an issue for her. Um, you know, I really love her personality. She's kind of given the blue steel right now. Um, but she does have this great goofy smile that you can see in some of her pictures online. Um, and she just, I can't wait to see how, how she becomes when she gets a, even more comfortable here in this facility. Yeah. So like you said, she loves attention. She's affectionate. However, there is one kind of handling she doesn't like. What's that? So she doesn't like vet restraint. And you might say to yourselves, well, I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, 
yes, you might not be doing vet restraint at home, but a your your vet might like to know that before they they start you know trying to vaccinate her, do blood draws, things like that. They might like to you know maybe use a muzzle as a, a precautionary measure, but also a lot of uh, young kids don't necessarily realize that when they're doing things that they think are affection to the dog might be in that same realm as vet restraint. So, you know, if you're hugging the dog and squeezing tightly or even just leaning over her to her, that might be construed as, you know, some sort of restraint that she doesn't like. Or if you're leaning and laying on the dog and you think you're cuddling, but you're really treating her kind of like a pillow. Also not something that a lot of dogs enjoy just across the board. Um, a lot of those things you shouldn't be necessarily doing with your dog, but because she doesn't, she's shown us that she's not a fan, definitely want to use more caution in, in terms of making sure that young kids aren't doing that type of stuff to her, um, or adults for that matter, because adults do it all the time too. Um, um, but we don't have any age restrictions or anything like on the type of, of kids and the ages in the household. Um, but you do want to make sure that you're understanding that she doesn't like that. Even if you're just planning on doing nail trims at home and you're restraining her, she's not a fan. Um, so a little muzzle training can go a long way for, you know, safety um, or just making those experiences super positive. You know, letting her lick some peanut butter off, off the refrigerator while you're trimming her nails. All of those types of things can be helpful. Um, and we can talk through those things during an adoption interview if you wanted to make a royalty part of your family. But obviously, as always, the first step is going to be going to that uh, booking website to make your appointment to meet her. And that uh, address is going to be visitfcac.as.me. We hope that you uh, have enjoyed meeting some of our many adoptable dogs. I think we have about 30 right now, a variety of sizes, ages, breeds, but all on that medium to larger size. Um, but if you're a dog person, that's great. Um, consider fostering, you know, check us out. If you're a cat person, we haven't been showing a lot of cats because they've been moving pretty quickly. Um, but we still have plenty of cats, again, a variety of ages and colors, sizes uh, on the adoption floor from, you know, our bonded pair of seniors to um, nine week old kittens we still have. So definitely check us out if you're looking to add a furry uh, family member to your household this holiday season. Mm -hmm.